My name is Ivor Flint uh, and I've lived in Kensal House for over 40 years and my connection with SPID goes back oh, quite a few decades now and SPID actually at the time had all of the right things in terms of their community outreach experience and the kind of projects they were offering were in line very much with the kind of thing that we wanted. They've run all sorts of um, events and classes for children, for adults. We used this uh, building for the um, children. We have a Filipino language school, so we, we do the lessons here every Sunday. Um, but also those theatre projects have also gained uh, a lot of traction in the press and uh, I believe won quite a few awards actually, um, which, is, which is not something that you can say I think probably for your average housing, housing estate. Um, and so we're, we're here to try and support them and to, to make sure that uh, they get the renovations they need to make this a better place. SPID asked me if I would like to be if I'd chair the board. So SPID brought in funding for heating equipment and for drama. Principally the idea was to actually keep it within the, the original ethos of Kensal House, to keep it as a community space, an active community space. Amongst the many positive things SPID have done, um, they've offered a lot of young people opportunities that they probably wouldn't have had if we not had that space, not just to our residents but also to the wider community. If this was taken away I would not be happy. I'd probably start a protest um, to bring it back because I really like this place. It's fun, I get to meet new people. Um, I just like coming here. Now we're actually at the point where we've got £2.6 million um, that, that SPID have raised. As a, as a neighbour, as a leaseholder, the SPID have done an extraordinary job. They, they've, been, they've really kept the place alive and they've kept what would have become a dead space um, active and they've really exceeded in their original brief. One of the other benefits of actually having this 2.6 million pounds of work um, is that currently the, the, the disability access to that, that space is actually quite challenging so people have to come in and make a very circuitous route so an extra benefit to that is being able to actually install a disabled lift and that disabled lift will also benefit the residents who live there. So one of the great things about this uh, refurbishment is that if the council has to start you know if we start addressing the, the leaks and the problems that are happening in basically this area and also other areas in the building then the council may be pressured into making fixes to other areas in the building and that would be beneficial for everyone. And obviously if SPID looks better then Kensal House looks better. Yeah I mean historically this space underneath here has been neglected quite badly for a number of years um, and SPID have worked very hard to keep it as a functioning space and put a lot of investment in it. Unfortunately um, the community rooms downstairs have actually have actually suffered very badly from leaks and there's been decades of poor maintenance and poor upkeep. You know, SPID have kept on top of it and done the very best they, they could, but this was really just as a stopgap until we were able to raise sufficient money to actually have the job done properly. But of course this is dependent on making sure that everything above SPID is actually dry and secure and safe and there is no water ingress from above, no water ingress from the roof, and no sewage leaks that are coming from some of the flats where, the, where there's been blockages, because that obviously will penetrate through down into the building, down into the basement, and, and come into the floor area that's, you know, that's occupied by SPID, which we can't really have. The leaks have been going on for a very long time, years actually, um, and, and sometimes it's, made, you know, it's, it's meant that the space has been unusable because someone's had to go in and clear up the leaks, and they have been Big, they, we're talking big floods here, um, not just sort of you know a little tiny drip, but you know, it's made it very difficult for the, the classes who are in there, the drama classes, the activities, sometimes to actually use the space effectively. You see, there's just atrocious negligence on behalf of the landlord. Um, the building itself um, has had problems with the concrete and I haven't had a full-blown leak, but I, we do sometimes get water seeping in. I think in the end of the day it's just bad maintenance. If they don't keep up to date with everything and do the little things, then they get to be in bigger problems. So come and fix the problems when they need to be done. And like, you know, this building is an old building, so it does need and 
to blame it on being listed is a rubbish excuse because although they built and it's meant to be a great building and an icon because it was built by Maxwell Fry and it was a big deal back then, but times move, so you've got to move with the times. Some of the other flats in Kensal House have also suffered from leaks and flooding um, and RBK and C as the landlord does actually have a statutory duty to actually make sure that people's homes are decent. And the leaks and the floods you know, don't just affect Spit, they do affect other neighbours and, and the whole estate actually. Up above they had floods to the point that it's uninhabitable. Last year Spid uh, supported and advocated for flat 29 and managed to persuade the council to rehouse the residents there. Look at this fucking shit. Look at this shit. Look at that. That should be love, isn't it? For six years, they have made me homeless and not helped the flooding. Now the system is working a little, but the issue for flooding has not been sorted. The problem is that living here is living in danger but now that flat 50 directly above spit is suffering the same things and in october they had some you know, some quite serious issues we had a flood about three four four months ago um which actually covered the entire flats and then uh, they, we spoke to the council with regards to what is happening you know in number 50 council house and they said to us um, they will rehouse us almost immediately. Well, because of electric, electricity and water damage don't go, it will essentially just ruin everything and cost a lot of money. And the first flood that flooded actually spoiled the dialysis machine, which makes them the hospital to replace. It. This is a new one now, you know, we're having, and of which the um, on Saturday, the, the flood came back again as it did last time, and um, it would have spoiled this machine if I didn't take off work to stay behind to protect the machine. And all this was all stick to the ground because this was done by the medical team. And then when the water flooded, the whole place was spoiled, it was lifted up. And even this one is a new thing that we try to put it back in because the water pulled it out. And this one also. You can see that we tried to do it, but we couldn't do it well. So if, if it flooded again, it goes straight down. Right, so that's why they're having that leakage downstairs. Now all this, the water, when it flooded, it pulled everything out. So this is all like hazards, you know, all around the whole place, right? And then when the water came from where I showed you, that's where it got flooded to the extent that it was pouring out. They came here, they took, uh, they promised me heaven and earth that they're going to take me out from here as soon as possible. That um, a person with my uh, uh, such ill health is not suitable to stay here. No one has ever contacted me or even shown me a place. And here, you can see where the water stops you know when it flooded the water flooded the entire house everywhere was flooded the sitting room the bedroom the se second bedroom the toilet everywhere was flooded with water and it wasn't a clean water it was sewage water you see you can see when someone brushes mouth from upstairs it kept running down here when people are having shower upstairs it came all that all the way down here so this is a complete nightmare this block of flood could fall one day and kill people if they don't do anything about it. As residents of flat 50 uh, council house, the council's negligence has caused my husband and I to lose the rights to quiet enjoyment of our flat. Having studied law in this country, I know my rights. The RBKC have ignored my husband's needs as a person on dialysis and have made his health worse by failing to fulfill their landlord's duties. As a member of Speed Refurbishment Projects Board, I've seen firsthand how this disrepair affects all the council house residents. The residents and the tenants of estates deserve better treatments from RBKC, who 
sued the residents of uh, Greenfall for reporting criminal neglect. I am asking for immediate rehousing and works to stop the sewage backwater flooding flat 50 and estate wide. It's also vital that Kensal's roof's deteriorated waterproofing be replaced within the year. And some, if something is not done, obviously, I remember what happened to um, the other uh, block of uh, flood before, how fire engulfed the entire place, and it's not quite far from here. So it might happen in this uh, um, council house if care is not taken. There is no person who knows how to deal with this. Only certain people who are suffering through this system have capability of trying to change the system. The system doesn't know what to do. They don't know how to help people who are suffering from flooding to be surviving through it and living through it, which is not a condition that they should be doing. Yeah, people with the water used to come down the pipe and it used to come up my bath, my sink, in the kitchen and everything used to come up, like food, fat, you name it. And one time I had two mini floods in my house as well, but the person above me is getting it, is getting it now. Number, well, the flat above me, it gets out of the backwash, right, for four years. And they've got records of me. Is even coming to the fucking bathroom. Hello, I'm Trisha. I've lived here for 50 years and I'm having this problem with the damp here and this other side there. I do wish they'd fix this dampness in the flats. It is dreadful and dangerous. Well, it is dangerous, isn't it? Water coming down from the roof and down to the ground. I believe that the council's roof survey has shown up some issues which are probably going to get worse if they're not attended to. Um, and so that, that's urgent, that's remediated or uh, sometimes may have to be replaced. Um, RBKC really needs to, to make sure that they do that sooner because the longer obviously you leave it, the more damage it's going to be caused and that means the more you've got to spend fixing the damage. So it's, it, you know, I, I think it will be prudent to actually do a really good job, fix the roof now. Otherwise, it would just mean that you'd have a wonderful job, a wonderful new space, and then the water comes all the way through and we're back to where we started again. And that's an incredible waste of, of money. So the repairs have to be have to be completed, otherwise we are, we could lose the funding, and that's going to have a catastrophic effect on the neighbourhood, Kensal House, Spid, and the residents. It's just imperative that the leaks are fixed long overdue. Why has not nothing been done about this? Why has this listed building been left to fall apart into disrepair? They have money to fix the problems above, yet they're not doing it. Why? So it's been 16 years working on this project and I think really it's, it really is time that we, we, we as the residents and I, speak, I think I speak for all my, all my neighbours and certainly SPID 
we really urged RBK and C to actually step up and actually you know, fulfil their statutory duty. There are a number of things that, that are important. Um, I think rehousing the residents in flat 50 and fixing its leaks and floods, repairing the backwater flooding that's affected some of the flats and again causing that that's really important that that's fixed. And I think bringing forward the capital works budget to, to, to fix any leaks on the roof and to prevent any further leaks is really important by compensating them um, for the leaks and the damage would be, you know, is, is essential really. Fixing these things now means that that 2.6 million pounds can actually be spent actually on the tasks that we've got and those costs won't spiral out of control. And it will kill a lot of people. So that is why we are coming out and telling the council to do something about this particular flood because it's flooding each time. You know, this happened three months ago and now it happens again on Saturday. So who knows when it will start again. So this is why we are coming out to tell the council to do something about this issue and they should do it fast. Finally, I think I would just like to urge RBK and C, um, you know, it's changes long overdue. We really need, as a matter of urgency now, is Kensington and Chelsea to take action, fix the things that they've agreed to fix so that we don't slow the project anymore, so that we can actually get this done and actually have a you know, this wonderful space that brought back to life even even better than it was before. So it really is now the time to do the right thing for Kensal House.